What mental health issues are hiding behind that beautiful smile of yours? Well, in this video, that's exactly what I'm going to be touching on and offering some spiritual, energetic wisdom and insight. And as a clairvoyant who has worked at um, studying the human energy field and being able to see the human energy field for 30 years now, I have seen a lot of patterns that I'm going to share with you today. So my name is Nancy Rebecca. I'm a registered nurse, psychic clairvoyant healer, teacher of psychic professional psychic development. And, um, lately I've been noticing there's this big shift. Now I know that since the COVID pandemic, uh, we were beginning to notice that the cracks in the concrete were beginning to get deeper and longer, that we were really challenged. I don't even need to name all the ways that all of you were challenged. I was challenged as well. And in addition to that, at the time, I ended up being diagnosed with breast cancer. After so many people that I've talked to, you've had many family members that died during that time and were sick during that time. And so we just kept thinking we couldn't take one more hit and we did and we survived it. And we even for many of us really were able to return to thriving in our life and being happy again. And then this past, I don't know, I keep saying for me since September of 2023, it's just like one thing after another, one astrological, um, astronomy, planets, uh, energetics, frequencies, vibrations, blue light, like just one thing after another was like this pressure building and building and building. And it's like, I can't take one more spiritually conscious enlightenment expansion of light. I just can't. <laughs> I just can't do it. I'm waving my white flag. But the reason why I wanted to make this video is because many of you have been actually writing me on the YouTube comment section and you are maybe doing okay. Maybe you're not doing okay, but maybe you are doing okay, but you're not quite sure about your loved ones around you or your friends or your coworkers that don't seem to be doing okay. And you're not quite sure how to assist them, or you're not quite sure how to set boundaries with them because if they can't manage their energy and you can manage your energy, what are you supposed to do about that? So I'm going to, uh, not be able to talk about everything that I've learned, but I'm going to touch on a few points to maybe help bring some conscious awareness to what might be happening. So I had all those questions, but then I had an event that happened last week. A very, very, very dear friend of mine got into a crisis. And when I was talking with her and asking about the crisis, it was like, how long have you been feeling like this? Because she looked so normal in every way. Uh, and it was like, she'd kind of been feeling like this for maybe the past year, but ever since the solar storms hit, that's when she cracked wide open. And so I didn't see it coming. She didn't see it coming. And so that's what I'm going to talk about, uh, just for a little bit here today. So thank you so much for joining me. And I I'd love to hear how you're feeling or if you've had experiences with your friends as well. So not only have we had Pluto that's been moving into Capricorn and then into Aquarius and then back into Capricorn and back into Aquarius <laughs> and it's doing this movement back and forth. And Capricorn is that, you know, at the top pyramid authority where you hope that by the time it gets down to the base, everybody's going to get a little piece of the pie, but it usually doesn't happen that way. And then you have Aquarius that wants all that power at the bottom power to the people. And then it will rise up to the top of the pyramid. So if you're feeling a little bit like you're flipping back and forth, that would uh, potentially be Pluto. Although I am not, an expert on astrology. All right. So then 
we've had we had the blue light surges that happened in November. We've had our uh, winter solstice event. We had our spring equinox event. We had huge full moons. We've had lunar eclipses. We had uh, I said the fall equinox, and then I said the spring equinox, and then on April eighth we had that huge solar eclipse that was just massive that just went straight across the United States and uh, many people in alignment with it could really see the solar eclipse. I flew to Arkansas, many of you know that. And um, and then just recently uh, we had those, what do they call X-class solar flares magnetizing the earth, just supercharging the earth with all of this energy. And that's when I started noticing that some of my students were like, whoa, this is a lot. I'm really struggling with grounding. And then, you know, then just talking amongst my other fellow teacher friends and psychic friends. And so we all started, this kind of buzz started happening. And so I'm sure with you as well that you've been noticing that. So it felt like we were running back and forth with a towel draped over our arms, attempting to catch all the balls that were just falling out of the sky. We're trying to keep it together. So spiritual insights can only take us so far when we're trying to keep our head on straight. We're trying to keep our head together. So as a registered nurse, I said, I'm used to looking at the human energy field and there's certain patterns. And I'm going to talk about some of those patterns, uh, throughout when it feels a little more natural for me to do that. So, um, you might be hiding something behind that smile or like with my dear friend was hiding something behind that smile, but she didn't know she thought her smile was real. She didn't know she was hiding anything until the dam broke. Or as I said, it felt like the floor suddenly was falling out from underneath her. So in these hidden issues, they can show up in the energy field years before they become an issue, years before they become a problem. So that I just want to say your energy field does not know how to lie. So that's why I call it kind of hiding behind the smile because it may be showing up in your auric field, but you may not recognize it until you start to get little symptoms and then maybe you're getting major symptoms and then you can maybe reach out for help. But with this last kind of solar eclipse, solar, excuse me, solar flares. And we had the beautiful Aurora Borealis. Wow. That was just like, just taking a stick and cracking over your knee. And it was just like, I didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. But when I asked her, these are some of the questions that I asked her, when was the last time you slept? And the answer was like four or five days ago. When was the last time you ate? She couldn't remember that. When was the last time you bathed? So those were those certain kind of, as we would call activities, a nurse would call them activities of daily living. Are you able to participate in your normal day-to-day -day activities of daily living? And if not, it, as that list gets longer, like not eating, not sleeping, not bathing, not able to work, then those are signals. So remember I said, we might be able to see it in the energy field, but it, you may not feel it in your physical body until you are already stretched thin. So I like to mention this as a nurse that, yeah, if you have a little bit of insomnia, like a couple days, that's one thing. But if it's going days on end, you do need to eventually find a way to get some sleep. Uh, if you're not eating, you um, having meals and nourishment, yeah, but it also helps you feel grounded in your body. Your body goes into that fight or flight. When you eat something, it helps you to calm down that fight or flight. So there's all those sorts of things to maybe take note of if you are really struggling after all of these energetic shifts. Those are the things that you want to pay attention to. 
So mast pain can show itself as a spiritual battleground in your auric field, and it can re even reveal how long you've been battling. So if someone came to my office and they came in and they're often, they're not even aware that they're struggling. And then I'll say, wow, it looks like you've been struggling for about three years with some low grade depression. How long have you been aware of this? And then as soon as I say it and maybe name it, you know, cause that's, that's the first step is to be able to recognize that you might need to address something. So often the person will say, wow, three years ago, my mother died or my spouse died, or I had a, uh, I lost a, a job and I haven't been able to work. And so often it will even show up in the energy field, how long it's kind of been dragging along. So, um, and a facade. So a facade is where it's like, you know, I'm smiling and I've, I've made a video about this. I'm smiling, but underneath, I'm not feeling very good. You know, it's like, if you're happy, be happy. If you're sad, be sad. But if you're sad, don't pretend to be happy. We kind of, I kind of talked about that in another um, YouTube video. So this is very, very similar. We can have facades. Most people will have one or two masks that they put on, like you go to work, you're gonna have, if you're an engineer, it's gonna be an engineer mask. You're a nurse, it's a nurse mask. You can have all, you know, if you're a coach for a little league, you're gonna have the coach mask on. And when you go home, that mask kind of drops away. But there are uh, people who, there are some of you who have some real insecurities on the inside or depression or anxiety, or maybe didn't feel when you were growing up that you really had permission to be yourself. You can have 30 masks where it's just layer after layer after layer after layer after layer. Now they don't stay permanently. They do eventually dissolve. Uh, but if you're struggling with that fear of letting people see the truth about what's really going on with you, you can spend a lot of energy trying to keep those, what I call pain masks in place. And that what was going on with my dear, dear friend last week was I couldn't see through it because I wasn't looking at them at an energetic level. Uh, they were smiling and they were happy and they were joking. And so, um, yeah, we didn't really talk about it. So I think that's another reason why I'm making this video because check in with your friends and there's something felt off with this dear friend, but I didn't say anything. I mean, how often have you not said anything? I didn't say anything, but now I would know with anybody, I would say, Hey, when was the last time you slept or you ate a good hot meal or you went out and played or went for a walk or when was the last time you went to work? So those are some really great questions to ask. And if you're needing to ask yourself those types of questions and you can see that in yourself, then it's okay to pick up the phone and call your friend like me and say, huh, I think I'm after this last little solar flare gizmo, I think I'm struggling a little bit more than I thought I was because we are moving, we are in this age of Aquarius, which is all about community. We are stronger to together than we are apart. And so we are uh, really finding out now, as we expand rapidly in consciousness, we need to do it together. This is not a lone uh, journey. This is a together journey. So um, let's see, I already said one to two mask, 30 masks. So, um, let me talk a little bit about depression. So depression is a result of your spiritual light, your energy, your focus is being way back there in the past. 
So let's say you had an event at school where you were bullied when you were 12 years old. And let's say it was quite a few kids that bullied you and maybe you had to switch schools and, and that event really stays with you. And yet now you're 45 years old and you find yourself, you're still revisiting that. I wonder why they didn't like me. I wonder why they were mean. I wonder why, why, why? or you know in your situation in your home life so you're always reviewing but literally your entire well not your entire spirit but a good portion of your spirit remains in the past trying to figure it out trying to sort it out so you need to be able to pull and i just encourage you right now to pull all of your energy into this present moment with you Remind yourself of what today's date is. Remind yourself of how old your current age is. And remind yourself that you, you're you not going to be able to resolve those issues in the past because you're no longer at that frequency. And so as you move your frequency here in the present moment, you've got so much more energy and resilience and strength to handle any solar flare that comes your way. Now, anxiety. So that would have, not that I had a lot of anxiety, but I call myself a future tripper. And I'm a future tripper because I'm an Aquarius. <laughs> I don't know how many Aquarians are out there, but Aquarians always kind of like to vision out there 50 years, 100 years into the future. However, when I was younger, I, um, in my 20s and 30s, I would kind of worry about the future, you know, especially if you didn't have much money and it's like, how am I going to get money to pay my rent next month? Or um, am I going to be able to graduate from school? You know, uh, what's going to happen to me in the future? And so the difference is all your energies in the future trying to figure out what's going to happen in the future. And so you send a lot of your spirit in the future to see if you can feel into if you're going to get that job. I mean, how many of you have done that? It feels like I'm going to get the job. It feels like they liked me during the interview. It feels like I'm going to have enough money to get that car in six months. You know, so that means you are literally moving into the future to see if you can feel that you're going to have the outcome that you wish for. So you want to get all your energy, remind your energy, yep, it's challenging. I remember when I had to learn, like, how am I going to stay here in the present moment and think about the future at the same time? But I do want to let you know it's possible. So those energetic uh, cracks in the surface are starting to show their wear and tear, especially for those of you who are experiencing very high levels of stress. So high levels of stress can cause you to disassociate, especially if your body is feeling a lot of stress. And these last events that we've had, these frequency events, can be really stressful for the body, even if you're not feeling it. So, um, yeah, you can start to, like that eggshell starts to crack a little bit, and then I think that's what happened to my dear friend. It was just like, pop, and then everything seemed to fall apart. The world may appear to be crumbling around you, so how do you find spiritual strength amongst all of the mental health struggles, whether they are yours or someone else? So it begins by knowing that you might have an issue, or it begins by knowing that your friend might be on an edge. Once you know it, you can do something about it. So it's almost like your spirit, like if, if you don't believe there's a problem, your spirit is going to kind of make it in a, this kind of mirrored reflective way so that you can't see it because you don't believe that it's there. So it's going to manifest and reveal to you that 
that's right, Nancy. It's not there. You don't believe it's there. It's not there. You can't see it. But the moment you admit that it's there, then you can see it. And then even better, you can do something about it. So spiritual uh, resilience leads to a greater potential to have that resilient bounce back when things are maybe going wrong for you or for those that you love around you. So I've been meditating for many, many years. Uh, many of you, you're doing yoga or you exercise. So all of those things can really build up the resilience of your aura. And then what happens is we get those big hits, you know, I'm talking about the solar flares or uh, the solar eclipse or um, maybe an earthquake or a storm that we can get those hits, but just like a, a balloon that's inflated with air, it just kind of bounces back again. It just kind of bounces off of you. But if your um, immune system is low, maybe you've just gotten over a bad cold, um, maybe you, um, uh, yeah, alcohol, drugs, maybe you um, eat a lot of foods that might have high processed sugar in them, those can cause your aura to be less resilient. So the more resilient your aura is, the more you're moving into that state of thriving, not just uh, surviving day to day. So again, we can pretty much, we are going through a phase of getting stronger. There, there's no doubt about that. We are getting stronger we're getting brighter, we're really being prepared. It does kind of feel like we're in boot camp. I don't like to go to the gym very often and it feels like I'm having to go to the gym, energetic gym every single day. And, uh, but just to let you know, that's how you can build your resilience. It's just slowly adding in a healthier diet, exercise, sleep, meditation, uh, fun, and uh, not isolating. Did you know, this is the crazy thing about anxiety. When you're anxious, you isolate because you don't want to get triggered to be anxious. But when you isolate and you're alone, it causes you to be more anxious. And then you're more anxious, so you don't want to go out because you don't want to cause anxiety. And you see it's a vicious, vicious cycle. So you've got to push yourself to get out. You don't have to be around people, but maybe get out into nature. Uh, but the more days, and wow, we have a lot of people who um, do all the gaming or how about you know playing the little games on our cell phone or uh, watching a lot of YouTube videos. So we can just kind of like hunker down and watch reel after reel or YouTube videos, I think I already said that. <clears throat> but you want to make sure that you take breaks and that you get out. So, okay, there's something really important here and I can't find it. Okay, I'm just going to have to, I'm not making it up. I'm speaking from experience, but I'm trying to find my keyword. So here's the keyword. Did you know that you can spiritually develop and spiritually develop so fast, so rapidly that you can cause a complete mental breakdown. So I've been teaching for 25 plus years and um, I work with students at a very high level, advanced level of energetics always encouraging uh, the students to really pace themselves. But it's like, okay, if I can meditate 30 minutes and feel this great, maybe I can meditate two, two hours and feel super great. Or I'm gonna take these five different intuitive development classes while I'm detoxing, while I'm on a water diet. Um, I'm gonna be really doing, you know, go on this 20 mile run or hike while I'm, um, uh, taking these classes, like you can do so much so fast that your physical body is screaming at you to pace yourself. It's screaming at you to slow down. It's screaming at you to um, 
to eat, to drink water. And if you aren't listening, your physical body can go full stop. And it's like, wow. And that happened to me. This was years ago. I mean, 25 years ago where I was, I love to meditate. I was meditating so much. And then one day I just couldn't meditate. It was like my whole body hurt. And I always tell this story, so you may have heard it before, but I got out of it by coloring in a coloring book and going snowshoeing and going bowling, like doing fun things helped me to turn it, doing human fun things, fun things as human, because I find meditation a lot of fun. Um, and so there's different things that you could do, like cooking, you know, and painting, working with clay. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do to balance out your spiritual development. And yes, I've had a few um, uh, students who've ended up in the hospital and we could see it coming, but there was no way it could stop because they were just by that point really into a lot of classes. So I just balance and harmony, balance and harmony. So I just want to, as I finish up, I just want to talk about some energetic symptoms. <clears throat> so a facade or a pain mask, I've already talked about it, can be layers. It can age you quickly. So you can look a lot older than you actually are if you have a lot of masks on your face. It is simple to resolve. You want a present time. You want to remind the mask on your face of what today's date is, what your true age is, and then you can take gold and cosmic energy and rinse it through your face over and over and over again, dissolving the layers. So it can take months, maybe even a couple of years, depending on how many layers of a facade mask that you have. Uh, depression, I've already told you, bring your energy in the present. Anxiety, I've already shared with you to pull your energy out of the future. Criticism uh, to me in the energy field. So have you ever colored as a kid in a coloring book and then you took a black crayon and you outlined the dress and you outlined the hair and the shoes, you outlined all the little pleats in the skirt. That's what criticism looks like in the field is it looks like it's got like you can have really dark circles under the eyes if you it doesn't matter if you've been criticized a lot or you self-criticize it looks the same in the energy field you can have dark circles under the eyes you can have dark um, circles around the mouth especially a lot around the face and maybe that's just because we see each other that way or there can be a little kind of a gray haze uh, about you and this is the cool thing about criticism. You don't have to say, you know, like if you hear yourself go, you're not very smart. I don't even know what makes you think you can do that because you're not very good at that. You know, like you don't have to say, I'm good at that. I'm smart. You don't have to do the positive thing. You just have to stop doing the negative thing. And so that means if you catch yourself, you're just washing dishes and you're like, oh God, I didn't take care of that again today. I always procrastinate. Stop yourself from criticizing yourself or stop someone from criticizing you. So you don't have to say positive things. I've done a little test on this with my clients and it works better if you just stop the criticism. All right. Judgment can cause the skin to look puffy and swollen. So if someone has a lot of puffiness around, they may be holding a lot of judgment um, energy. Ego, the aura will be very ballooned. It looks like I call it the light bulb. Very ballooned around the top of the head, but not in their um, hips and legs and feet can be achy and cold. And it's just because there's a lot of mental energy that is building up the ego. Yeah, I should write a book. I have a whole list of these things, but ultimately, if we go right back to the beginning of Behind the Smile, Spiritual Insights, Behind the Smile. So what are you hiding behind the smile that you can start kind of managing and starting to get into balance or 
Do you have some friends, family, loved ones that may be hiding some pain and maybe have been signaling things and maybe it's just like, well, ask a few questions. So we are in, in these times of a mental health crisis there's um, and mental health support and the need of support is at an all-time high. The thing I'm super excited about is, is how many mental health professionals are available online now. So even if they're in another state, um, if you don't have anybody available to you, you can find somebody in another state that you can talk to or talk to a friend. So anyway, uh, for those of you who asked that question, thank you very, very much for asking, you know, how do we support ourselves? How do we support others during this great time of change? We'll keep having conversations about that, but I do appreciate and hope that you will write your own solutions that you have found work really well. So as other people are reading it, they can also find um, spiritual wise insights from you too. All right, take care everyone. Have an awesome uh, week. And remember, we're always stronger together than we've ever been apart. And we are in the river of life together. All right, take care everyone. Bye-bye.